If you watched the announcement video before this, you'll know this is the first in a series of videos as part of the Streets of Paris event. And in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate some easy ways to create some really unique and elegant glass display cases to showcase your miniature items. And I'm also going to cover how to jazz up some pre-made cases. In addition, you're going to get a sneak peek at some of the miniatures I'll be covering in future tutorials. If you're watching the pictures, you'll get a hint of what some of those things will be. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the first of two pastry stands. This one's a little bit easier than the other one, a little less fancy. And although they're pastry stands, um, they can be used for anything. And I will be using them for both pastry and for other things in future tutorials. And the first step was to glue a microscope slide to four feet, just to kind of lift it off the ground, give it a little, little interest. And I used glossy accents for that since you cannot see the the, uh, it dries clear, and so you can't see it as well through the glass on the feet. And then the next step was to create a base, which I started by attaching two rondelles. Now, anytime I really needed a firm connection, or you weren't going to see the glue, although glass, uh, although um, E6000 dries pretty clear, I used that because that would give me the most firm connection. And then uh, once that was dry, I came in with a couple of metal beads and glued those on top. And then the fourth step, once all that was dry, uh, I came in with two round hollow brass tubes. Now, what I'm using is a product that comes from a company called K&S, and they make a lot of tubing for hobby work, and they make uh, brass, and they make the silver, and uh, they make hollow and solid and all kinds of uh, widths and lengths. So uh, I, on here, I've given you um, what I used for this. It fits within that bead. And I'll also give you a link on my uh, blog post that goes along with this with a link to at least one store that sells these. You can find them on Etsy, eBay. I think they even sell some through Amazon. Then, of course, stores that carry things for hobbies carry these. Now, you don't have to use that. Another option would just to be use a wooden skewer or a lot of cocktail um, a t cocktail toothpicks are a little heavier. Uh, you could use one of those and just paint them. So you don't have to use the brass piece, but it really does look nice if you can. Now, once the rods are dry, the glue is dry, and when you're doing this, be sure that they're upright, that they're not listing in one direction or another. Um, and also, I'll mention that when you cut these, uh, the ends are probably going to get crimped, and you'll need to use a needle nose plier to open those back up and make them round again so that they fit in the beads. And uh, then you're going to bead or glue a bead, another one of those beads, right at the very top of the rod where it's flush. Um, I think you can see that in the picture. And then once that's dry, then you're going to want to add a rondelle on top of that. And it's kind of flipping what you did on the bottom. You're going to do the same thing on the top, just reversed. And now you've got a platform for that next glass slide. And so I went ahead and glued that in place. Now I used, um, I went ahead again and used the E6000 and I just put it uh, in the center area so that once I get the next thing on top, you're not really going to see it, but I got a really good connection with the glass slide and that rondelle. And then I want to dress up the top of that just to make it look nice and also to cover any gluing. And uh, you can see I use these little uh, brass cones. You can use them as little feet on things, but they look really nice kind of as a, as a finial or a decorative piece on the top. And I added that and then my final step was out of my um, stash. I have a couple of little gold beads or de decorative like filigree beads. And I put those on top just to give it, you know, the final touch and to finally dress it up. So for this next stand, it's a lot fancier um, and it also involves four microscope slide, so you get a lot more surface area for setting things. And you're going to notice as we go through all of these stands uh, and glass cases, I'm using a lot of the same products over and over again. In this one, I'm starting with two really pretty pieces of filigree. And again, I'm going to build my base, and I will start by gluing the rondelles in place in the center of those. Again, wait till it dries. Now I'm going to use another bead. This is a different bead than the other one, but you could use the same one. Um, uh, and I glued those in place. And again, I've cut myself two rods and uh, glued those rods in place. And again, making sure that everything stands up straight. Nothing is flopping over one way or the other. And once you have that done, then I go back in and I glue another bead a little bit up off of the bottom bead. So there's a little gap there. And that gap's probably about half an inch. 
And, um, and that's just going to make this look a little bit more interesting. You don't have to do this. And I did want some separation between that and the filigree that I'm going to use to hold the glass slide. And I just think it looks a little bit better. So you want to glue those in place and make sure that you're gluing them exactly in the same position on each of the rods. So you don't have one lower than the other, or of course your glass slide's not going to be level. And then uh, for the next piece, the filigree that's actually going to hold up the glass slides, I've got two options for you. The first one, the circular one, which is the one you'll see in the sample that I'm making. Um, Alpha Stamps is running a little low on those, so they've come up with another one, and that you can see that in, in number three, the other option, where it's a square one. And they'll both work just as well as the other, just depends on what you like and what's available. And um, those you need to punch a hole in the very center so that it will go over the rod. And these, these, both of these filigrees are very easy to punch. Uh, punch a hole into them with just a, with just a punch and um, slide those over and then glue those in place over the bead. Now, the only thing I'll point out with number three is I would suggest if you really notice the position that those square pieces are, are um, glued in and that, the, the, that I've turned them at an angle. And so I, ha I don't have them square on the bottom filigree. I've got them at an angle so they look more like a diamond because a point, the point that goes out will give you more gluing surface area than if you make it square. So if you're gluing the, um, the glass to the square edge of it, the long edge of it, you won't have as much surface area as if you turn it and glue it across a point. So that's the only thing that I would say would be a difference between either one of those filigrees that you use. And of course, you could use something else. You just need to make sure that whatever you choose, that it has enough area for you to glue the slide on that the slide's not going to fall off or, or bend down. Now continuing on, uh, you can see that I've added two glass slides, one on each side of the filigree. And uh, jump down to number four. I didn't take a picture of it when I put the first sets of slides on, but if you look at number four, you can see that I just used very lightweight clamps to hold those in place when I glued the um, the uh, glass slide in place. Now, I did use E6000 there, so when I applied it, I very carefully applied it just where the, um, the filigree brass was and, and was very careful not to get it where it would show um, in the open glass area. Now, of course, if you get it there, you can always use a little Windex to try to remove any excess, uh, but you have to be careful because you don't want to remove the glue that you want to stay in place. So I very carefully did that and then um, put the clamps on and you can see number one they're they're dried they're on there and you can see you got two nice nice surfaces on each side of the stand now another thing I will I will point out in number one is before I glued those glass slides on do you see some tape down there on the filigree you want to tape your feet down the distance that you want the glass slide to be because you this it'll move around I'm telling you, this is the easiest way to do it. Make sure your filigree is all lined up, that you've got the distance between each one of them that works for the glass slide fitting on, um, on the uh, filigree, the round filigree. And you'll notice if you look really close, there's just a tiny bit of, of excess of the glass slide over that filigree on each side. So that's the distance you want. So you'll want to tape down one side, the filigree and the pole on one side, then set down your other side, use a glass slide to, to figure out what distance you need, and then, then tape down the other one. And then you just want to leave this tape down while you're continuing to add the other slides. Now, once you get that first level of glass slides on, you're going to go back in and add another bead. Now here, the bead, unlike the first time we did this, we did it flush at the top. This time we're not going to do it flush at the top because we're going to use another one of these big uh, filigrees and we need space for that to go over the pole. So you're going to want to leave like probably like a quarter of an inch of, uh, of um, of rod or skewer or whatever it is you're using for your pole, you're going to want to leave that open and slide the bead down a little bit further and then let that dry in place. Again, making sure that it's in the same position for both rods. Um, and then once that's dry, then you can glue your second piece of filigree in place. Let that dry. Again, I'm using E6000 for all of this. And then when that, once that's good and dry, then you'll be able to add your next set of uh, glass slides. And then, as you see, number four, I'm adding the second set. I glue one side on first, let it dry, then glue the other glass slide on the other side, and using some clamps just to hold it in place. Now, for the final touch, I added uh, one of these cones on the top that will cover up any gluing 
It'll also cover up anything that's left of the rod. And then again, I added another set of beads to the top just to dress it up. And, and this gives you a really pretty elegant uh, pastry stand. This uh, next case is made by gluing together multiple microscope slides and you have a couple options. One is you can make a case with just a set of three slides or you can glue together two sets of three slides to make a longer case. I wouldn't go to more than that uh, unless it's something that you're going to glue to a wall because there just isn't enough support with glue in between each one, especially once you get some weight on it. Um, so all you're really doing is just gluing them together. As you can see in the pictures, I used uh, E6000 and you want to be as careful as possible to keep the glue right on the edge and then go back in and clean up any extra glue. Uh, use, usually uh, if you use Windex, that will help to dissolve the, the glue and then you can go in and, and wipe some of it away or also um, use a razor blade to just trim some of it away. And in the first one here, you can see I've just glued together three. That's going to be a single three uh, glass case. And then you see that compared to the second one where I've, I've attached two of the glass cases together. Now, um, you can use, that will be the top of the case, the tops and the sides. And now you need a bottom. And you could use glass for the bottom if you wanted to. But I've chosen to uh, cut a, a piece of chipboard. And I've cut a piece uh, for the bottom and also two pieces for the sides. And I've covered the what will be the outside of that with decorative paper. And then the inside I've covered with a faux suede, which I thought uh, looked really nice and, and, and looked like something that you would see in a jewelry case. And then uh, once you do that, you, you do not want to glue your bottom in place until you put the stuff on it because once you glue it in place, you won't be able to get back into the case. Um, you can go ahead and glue your sides on, which I do that usually because I want that to um, give the glass some support while I'm working with it. And then um, you can see below, I've done a couple of different options on feet and I would not recommend adding feet until the very end. I've added them just to be able to take photos for the uh, tutorial, but I wouldn't do that. For the long case, I'm gonna have it sitting up. So on number two, you see I'm using some wooden feet. They have a little nub on them, which I cut off so that the um, the top of the, the uh, leg was flush with the bottom. And then the other little case, I decided I'm gonna sit that on top of a, another case or table. And so for feet, all I did was add um, some of these little bead caps underneath just to raise it up a little bit. So um, the order I would do it is once you get your bottom made, uh, say in the case of my faux suede here, uh, I would glue all the things on it that are going to be inside the case, then glue that to the case, the glass part of the case. And then once everything is done, last thing you do is put your feet on. Now in terms of extra things that I've added to it to dress it up, um, one is I've used fold over bales to act as hinges, just, you know, a decorative touch to make it look like you could open it and then some handles and then another thing that I do is I add stickers along the edges where the connections are made between the pieces of glass and that really helps dress that up and it also helps to hide any of the glue lines and so I used um, some uh, some silver stickers stickers because that's the, the color scheme I'm going with in the room I'm going to be using this in the grays and the silvers would look really nice and so I happen to have some of those in my stash but you can find them online. And then Alpha Stamps does carry the same thing uh, in black and in silver. And so um, I just use the thin lines and you can see like for the large case, I've used the lines on the um, horizontal and then also in the section where the two sets of glass come together in the center there, I've used the, um, the stickers there too. And you probably want to run a little bit of a bead of say glossy accents down when you put the sticker on just to make sure that it, it adheres. Um, with putting it on the glass, you might not get as good a contact with just the, the, the uh, adhesive that's on the sticker itself. So I would recommend just putting uh, a little bit down and then you can wipe it as you put your sticker down and then wipe over it to get rid of any of the excess. And so basically that gives you a really simple, elegant looking um, glass case. And here you can see a version of the glass case that I made several years ago. And then of course, the one that I'm doing for this project.
This next upright case is probably the easiest of the bunch, and that is because the box itself is a kit that Alpha Stamp carries. It's just a simple, simple little box that you put together, and uh, I then decorated the inside and the outside with um, a paper pad, uh, and the paper is called Rom Romantique, I guess, Romantique. And um, it's a whole line of theirs, and I'm going to be using some of the other papers for other cabinets and also for um, the fashion uh, store. And then I just accented the edges of it inside and around the outside with the silver stickers, just like I did with the other case. And then to create brackets to hold the glass slides for the shelves, I used um, some filigree, and you can see that uh, on, the, on the bottom right. And this filigree is really easy to bend, but it's still sturdy enough to hold the glass shelves. And so I just bent it to create an L bracket. And I painted it silver since that's the scheme that I'm going with here. And then glued those in place. And of course you can make your 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 um, shelves whatever distance apart you want. And you know, if you wanted more shelves, you could add another piece of filigree or you could use something else to be your L bracket. But the idea is just to create something to put inside there that's gonna actually hold your glass slide. And then next here, you can see that I've glued the glass slides in place. And uh, on the top, I put a piece of embellishment. You could either use uh, polymer clay or paper clay, whatever you feel comfortable with. I think I did use polymer clay for this one and baked this uh, baked this in the oven. And, and these, these kind of uh, molds you can put in the oven and bake them, and they'll be fine. And then I used uh, three different colors of paint. I used uh, a gray, a dark gray, and then I uh, used my finger and rubbed on a, a tan colored and color. And then on top of that, I used uh, some white off white paint that I, again I put on my finger and just rubbed on onto the embellishment. And that color scheme kind of goes with the color scheme of all the other things, uh, all the other papers in the uh, in the paper pad that I'm using. And the final touch was to. Um, add some wooden feet, which I painted silver, again, to go with that whole theme. Now, another option you have is to put a door on the front of it. And um, here you can see that I've added a door and you've got a couple options. This one, I used some plastic and you've seen me use this before in other projects where I've used this for the window glass. So it's lightweight um, and uh, wouldn't put too much weight in the cabinet on the front. And I've attached it with a couple of hinges and I used E6000 on the hinges to attach it both to the box and to the plastic. The thing you need to be really sure of is that your paper is adhered very well to the box because you don't want the weight of this pulling the hinge off of the box. Um, and then I just used some flat back, used some flat back beads to uh, cover up the holes and then also a handle, a silver handle. And so you can open and close that. Um, now, if you want to use glass, which is what I did, an actual piece of glass, which I did um, several years ago uh, doing um, another perfumery uh, miniature building or shop. And here you can see what they look like. And I actually use picture frame glass. And you're going to see me use picture frame, frame glass in a couple of other cases that I'm doing. But I, I had this box specially sized for um, this whole project so that it is the size of a three and a half by five and a half picture frame, which are, you can find those everywhere. Um, I frame a lot of my art in those and a lot of it's three dimensional, so I can't use the glass, I have to take that out. And then I have that glass available to do projects like this. And so in the case of the, if you're gonna do it with actual glass, you're going to want to glue it shut and not have it open and close because the glass is just gonna be too heavy. And then I would also suggest that you mount these cabinets against the wall, actually glue them on the wall so that they, that they um, that they uh, stay in place and they don't fall forward. And then you can just see that I've embellished it with other things like more of the metallic stickers. And then I put a chipboard piece on the top and some faux buttons and just kind of dress them up. And then of course you can now see the finished version of the uh, case I just went through talking about how to make. And you can see how that looks with, with stuff in it. Next up is a floor case, and I am using the exact same box as I used for the upright case. And I'm also using the same paper pad for uh, the papers. And the first thing I do, of course, is assemble the box, and I covered it with paper. And now we have our same uh, rondelles as you saw in the very beginning. And again, I am gluing them to each corner. I'm starting to build a base. And then the next thing I do, again, I use some um, 
some uh, other rondelles to go inside of those and glue those in place. Again, I'm using E6000 for all of this just to be sure that I have a really good um, connection with the box. And then I move forward and I'm uh, cutting more of the rods and gluing those in place. And again, making sure that everything's standing up straight, nothing's wonky. And then after that all dries, then I add another rondelle on top of the, um, of the posts or the, the rods. And those are just flush with the very top. If you look very closely at the picture, they're absolutely flush. And then uh, again, I add another one of the, the little rope rondelles on top of that. So now I've created my platform. So just like with the uh, pastry stands, you've got, um, you've got that platform built on the bottom. You've got a stand on the top. They're flipped of each other. So uh, two rondelles, the bigger rondelle, little rondelle, little rondelle, bigger rondelle. And then uh, glue your piece of glass on top of that. And um, this is a picture frame glass that I was talking about that I used before. And so that gives me um, a top tier of glass, which makes it really pretty because when you put things underneath, you know, you can see them uh, through the glass. And um, in addition to that, I dressed up the sides. I used another mold um, to make some pieces to go all the way around it. And I colored them the same way as I did with the upright case with those same color combinations of gray, uh, tan, and an off-white. And then you can see the mold that I use. It has a bunch of stuff on it. I'll be using more of these as we go along in the project. And then you can also see the top. I've got the little little kind of um, cone feet or beads. They're not the cones, but they're the round type feet. I've got those on top just to cover up the glue and so you don't see anything underneath that and just to dress it up too because I think it looks nice. If you'd like, you can get even fancier and do two tiers of glass. And um, same starting point, I'm building my base. The only thing is I made my rods a little shorter um, based on the height of the room, um, I needed to uh, not get too much higher than the other, other cabinet. And so I've got two layers, but the bottom one is just shorter than the other one was with a single layer. Did the same thing, built them up, create bases, go up and uh, create an, a second base so that you can put the next piece of glass on. I'm using the same materials, the same rondelles, the same rods. Um, and then, of course, the bead at the top to cap it off. I'm using the papers again from the paper pad, and that metallic paper is also in there. Um, I also kind of trimmed it up on the edge there with some Dresden, and then I added some feet uh, on the uh, on the bottoms, which you know kind of adds it a little bit more um, interest to the piece. And so it's, it's a little bit fancier than than the uh, than the single tier piece that that you looked at before. If building cases is not your thing, you could work with a pre-made case. And Alpha Stamps is carrying three different pre-made cases, which I'm going to be using in this project. And the first one here is a long case, and in the back there are doors that slide open. And I decided to jazz it up by painting it. And so I painted the bottom the gray, and I used a mold to uh, make the decorative pieces you see in the front and on the side. And again, I used polymer clay and baked the mold. You could use paper clay if you like. Um, it's just nice because the polymer clay doesn't shrink as much as the, um, as the uh, paper clay does. And it's pretty fast to get it done because you just put it in the mold and bake it. Um, but you could, like I say, you could still go with paper clay if you like. And you can see I've done the same embellishment on the side. I've used another, another piece of the mold to create that. And then I also used a piece of Dresden that I painted Using that same paint scheme I've been using and the embellishments the same way, I'm using the three colors, the dark gray, the tan, and the cream color. And one of the reasons I added the filigree, uh, or not the filigree, but the Dresden, around the top of where I painted it is that um, it kind of finished it off nicely and it kind of hides that edge between the paint, the original paint, and the white and the gray because it was very hard, it was so tiny, and it was very hard to make sure that there wasn't any overpainting on the white where I didn't want it. So I didn't have to worry about it too much because I just putting that Dresden on um, pretty much covered that up. And the other thing I did is since I was using uh, acrylic paints, they don't like to stick very well to things that have uh, a coating on them. So what I did is after I got done painting everything, I went over it with a few layers of Mod Podge just to seal it and to keep the paint from scratching off. And then here you can see the case with some things in it and on top of it. The next case is a tall 
case where the front is sloped, and I think you can see that in the image there, and it also has doors in the back that will slide open so you can get things inside. And to dress this up, I put some signage on the front, and the way I accomplished that was to print this on a piece of transparency film and then run it through a Xyron machine to apply uh, adhesive equally across so you won't see the adhesive when you put it on. And then just simply cut it out. They're sized to work with this case and, um, and then just uh, put them on the case. And I will have those for you on my blog to download if you want to if you want this cabinet and you want to add that to the cabinet. And what I would recommend is when you print on um, transparency film, there is a side that you print on. There's one side is smooth, the other one is a little bit rough, and that's the side that the ink goes on. So what I do is I would um, print the images uh, flipped, so backwards. So that way when you apply them, the shiny, nice part will be what will be on top, and that rougher part that you've printed on will be behind. And so they will just look a lot better if um, you see them through that shiny side as opposed to the other way around. And I'll have the images for you on the blog both ways. I'll have flipped them already for you and then I'll have them the other way in case you want to apply this to something else. And then of course you can see um, the case filled up with goodies and you've got some space on the top so you can actually have some things sitting up there too as well as inside the case itself. The last case is a smaller, shorter um, glass case and it's open in the back. So there's a piece on the front and then if you turn it around, you can get into the shelves. And I really haven't done anything to this one, although I think it would look really cute with some feet on the bottom to lift it up and just maybe uh, jazz it up a little bit. And of course you can, you can paint it too. Uh, and then you can see what it looks like with some of the goodies uh, inside the case. That wraps up the glass case tutorial. If you are interested in any of these and wanna add them to your own project, then you'll want to hop over to my blog. The link will be in the description area if you're on YouTube. Otherwise, you're on my blog and you're watching it from there. And it will have the supply lists, any links, um, lots more pictures than what you see here. Information on the giveaway because I'm going to be giving away a pastry shelf that I made, the fancy one. And then uh, there will also be the images that I talked about to uh, put on uh, the pre-made shelf, as well as... Um, information on the next video and from the picture you are looking at right now you can see it is going to be the tutorial on making all of those yummy yummy looking delicious treats that you see.